Hey folks, your OS Reviews. Today we have an interesting video because we're looking at a bit of a mystery phone. Uh, it's not something that we'll be seeing here in the States, nor is it really an international unlock device, but you can get it unlocked and I guess use it because it's a quad band GSM device. And in a sense, it is a retro product because it's a flip phone, but is still sold in some places and it's really designed for use in South Korea uh, in contract either with Annie Call or with OLLEH. Uh, this one seems to be sold with both of those two popular carriers carriers in South Korea, and it's made by Samsung. It has design elements pretty similar to Samsung's more recent flip phones that they are making in Asia uh, specifically, and they include things like the LG Wine that we saw. Uh, there's also things like the uh, LG Master, uh, the LG Wise, which all share the same design language, which is to say a lot sleeker, a lot more in line with uh, Samsung's current design philosophy. So they're still kind of plasticky, but the screen size has significantly been increased. So you can definitely tell uh, this is something from, let's say, 2015, 2016, as opposed to, you know, 10 years ago when the Razer came out, so like 2005. Um, so a lot of things have been updated, the keys and numbers and everything is larger and bigger, but the overall portfolio as well as the fit and finish feels pretty solid and uh, seems similar to Samsung's current offerings. So taking a closer look at the design of the unit first, we have this plastic construction quality. It has these rounded corners and edges, uh, which makes it pretty easy to hold. Again, you can get this phone unlocked, uh, use this use SIM when you're in Korea, but uh, then you can just use it as a typical feature phone. It's not meant as a smartphone, unlike some more advanced uh, flip devices that Samsung and LG have produced that have a touchscreen and actually runs on Android. This one just has a typical feature phone operating system, but it's still kind of interesting because, again, it's uh, Samsung's more recent feature phones, which they've been making less and less of. It's definitely a load-end device, but it feels pretty well constructed. It's made out of plastic. Behind the back cover, you'll find access to the battery. It's uh, pretty small just because, you know, this doesn't use a massive processor, doesn't have a lot of RAM, so it doesn't really require too much power, and indeed it only has an 880 uh, milliamp hour capacity, but it will last you for about seven days before you recharge it, and fully recharging the unit, still using the proprietary Samsung charger that takes us way back, uh, it takes roughly three hours to complete. There's that slot for the full-size SIM, and this is a micro SD card slot, uh, which supports up to 64 gigabytes if you're watching videos or loading some music. Uh, you can also use a, a bit of the built-in memory to take images with the front-facing 3-megapixel uh, camera, or I should say rear-facing, because when you flip it open, there's another front-facing camera, but we'll talk about that in a moment as well. Uh, the overall hinge feels a little bit loose since it's exactly centered. You can see it kind of wobble. reminds me a bit of the BlackBerry Pearl Flip that we also saw a few years back, uh, but otherwise a pretty clean presentation. On the spine, you'll find access to a tactile volume rocker, and we are certainly happy to see that here because a lot of flip phones seem to omit this, and as a result, when you're in a call and you want to adjust the volume, you have to take it away from your face and then use the D-pad. That becomes annoying, so this is a nice feature that they thought out. Pretty slim, um, also has a chrome accent, which is fairly elegant, matches the design tone of a lot of Galaxy devices that we saw uh, maybe you know one or two years ago. Over here, there's that aforementioned proprietary Samsung port that also dubs for the headphone, so you have to use an adapter. Unfortunate that there isn't a 3.5mm jack, but... Anyways, up here there is a uh, lanyard cord as well for charms, that seems to be something more popular in Asia as well. And uh, anyways, you can just flip it open and you have access to a 3 inch TFT LCD display. So definitely larger than uh, past with phones you know, we've seen a few years ago here in the States. We haven't really seen a release uh, in, the, in the form of a flip phone for a while now. but. Regardless, there is now a flat sheet of plastic, so it almost resembles a touchscreen in many forms. It looks quite sleek. And above here, we have access to a 1.0 megapixel front-facing camera for video chatting purposes. Uh, this phone in particular doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi, so you have to rely on 3G connectivity, unfortunately. Uh, but there is Bluetooth on board, so you can listen to music wirelessly and use Bluetooth speakers and all that. It still has a fairly basic web browser for doing some quick searching, but YouTube is not fully supported. Uh, there's also HGPS on board as well. A loudspeaker is on top, and sound quality is actually pretty good on this. Uh, you have in below the, discre the display itself, we have the Annie Call logo, and finally there is a pretty spacious D-pad. Uh, numbers are large, they're raised above the surface, and they're pretty easy to dial by feel. We have a brushed aluminum surface as well, which is pretty fancy. Uh, there's finally another microphone down below here. T9 style layout, so not the best for texting. If you do a lot of typing, this is not going to be the best for you, although Samsung has built-in predictive text. I should mention that the default language 
on here is in Korean, but you can set it back to English uh, and a few other uh, languages on board as well. You can see here in terms of the controls or a four-way navigation toggle, the center is an OK key, also dubs as the shortcut to the web, which is something we're not a huge fan of, something that a lot of flip phones tend to do. And there are also uh, two uh, hotkeys which control the menu system when the device is on. And finally, there's an application shortcut key. There's one that takes you to the camera quickly, talk and end keys that doubles as a power key, and clear uh, key that takes you all the way back to the main menu. So this keyboard is also backlit, so you can still see it under darker environments. So let's do a quick boot up. It takes, I would say, about 30 seconds to completely boot up, so not the fastest thing in the world either. Um, and this is what it looks like when it's opened up. The screen is pretty bright and vibrant, and viewing angles are great. So as usual, Samsung has delivered a impressive looking display. Let's wait for a few seconds. I'm just going to quickly show you some of the things. Again, we don't have a USIM on here. It seems like the, the language is still currently set to Korean, uh, but again, you can go through settings and change those if you want. We do like the continuation of that Chrome theme, so it kind of goes into the borders, bleeds into the insides, and again, adds a modern touch to a uh, fairly old concept of, of a flip phone. So there it is, the display itself. You can see I have access to time and date, uh, some ringtone settings, you can go into uh, more settings to check out the applications, there are a few built-in games, but again, most things right now are set, still set in Korean. There's that wallpaper that shows off the screen pretty well, and after a few seconds of inactivity, the screen will dim and ultimately turn off. Um, again, reception and call quality in here are pretty strong. Same thing about the speakerphone, which uh, interestingly enough is also going to use the top or the inside of the phone. Uh, there isn't one directly revealed on the outside, but you can still play songs and a few movies on here as well. But all, all in all, this is a pretty interesting uh, device, I guess, to look at. We also checked out a few years ago some Japanese uh, NTT Docomo uh, handsets, and those seem to be quite popular. So now we're just Again, taking a quick look, another international device, this one for any call or O-L-L-E-H, uh, depending on the carrier that you use. And this is probably another one that is fairly low and uh, budget oriented, a foot phone. But again, if you're traveling, if you need something quick just to talk and to use for calls, uh, this could be an option to quickly consider. And you can check out more details about this as well in our article. But this has been our quick video uh, kind of mystery look at this phone. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.